Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 201 being recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here right now, mid-December. We'll see if we sneak another Wix meeting in at the end of the year. What are we talking about? If you're here, please say hi. Go ahead and jump in the channel and say, yo, what's up? Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about triage like we always do, a few issues to cover. Um, there is a Wix v4 design discussion item that was added to the end of the queue by uh, Sean, so that's all good. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit about how the GitHub discussions uh, beta is going for us um, that we launched, I don't know, a week ago or so. And then always they'll do questions, comments for anything that else that people want to talk about. But let's go ahead and get triage checked off. Not too much to talk about, I don't think. Bob, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Add XC launch utility to burn engine for detection purposes. So this is our friends in Visual Studio trying to track down the .NET thing because of the how to detect .NET because it's more complicated than any of the other searches that have been. Um, and Sean has already been talking to him about this a little bit. And I think that's where we're at. So is this just need a, a whip? Or do you find this redundant with what you've done in 5.39, Sean? Um, what are your thoughts here? I'm not sure where they're going to go with this. Like, I expected to use a bundle extension to do what they need to do. Right. So I don't know whether they're going to pursue this or not. I mean, someone can implement it if they want to but I don't see a need for this right now. Well, it seems redundant with the way that you've already designed to handle this, right? I think it's redundant for the .NET Core check, but other people might want to write their own detection, you know, write code for detection where they don't want to write a bundle extension. <sighs> uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this would seem to be a way to communicate one integer. The only thing you can do is get the exacode. I mean, I suppose you could get, you know, standard out, and then interpret it. Yeah, I don't and know then you do that. And then do what with that? Yeah, I mean, it's like really the only thing you can do is is get the return code, right? Yeah. It just seems um, less useful than what. <laughs> On proposed. Well, I'm just like I'm. I'm. I, it it fits what the .NET people are trying to do, right? Which is they have this XE that they wrote to you know determine whether something is installed. Um, it, okay, I'll be more generous. They wrote an XE to determine like applicability and. I'm like, okay, yay. Um, the fact that, you know, they determine applicability by running code is, you know, if if we did cameras, you would see my eyes rolling. Um, but it just, it, it's like, okay, well, that's fine. Um, but I'm like, other than that, and, and I, again, I'll be more, generous than I normally would and say, okay, it also solves the problem that they were trying to solve um, in the other issue of needing to do this without um, without letting the, the runtime, you know, stick around across uh, custom action servers. Um, otherwise, the fact that, you know, this XE is, you know, an XE wrapped library like well we could just use a library okay they're solving the custom action server problem um but burn it's just like i don't don't see it i just really don't see it um so the idea of you know doing i don't want to support another way of doing this that is less um less useful than well, i just don't see it as a generally applicable thing right yeah. You know, again, you know, the only two things you could get out of it are the Xcode and and you know standard error, standard out. And I just I don't picture that being like generally useful. 
um, in certainly not in burn and even in util extension. It's just like why I don't get it. Yeah. I think the answer is no, not this way. I mean, if you're just going to ship an XE, then. Yeah, if you're just going to ship an XE, then just call it from your BA at that point. <laughs> it's just an XE, just launch it from the BA. Why have Bert go? Why have to teach Burn how to do all this? Well, if you are using the built in BA and you don't want to. Right, yeah. C++. Well, but then, then if you're using a built-in burn BA, then you should write an extension to extend these things. So. Which does require C++. I mean, I, I, I see the point. I, I, I'm not arguing against the, you know, the idea of shipping uh, bundle extensions. I'm, or wait, is this a bundle extension or BA extension? What do we call them? It's a bundle extension that... Bundle extension. Um, I'm not arguing against, you know, the idea that we should ship them. I'm arguing specifically against this one because, again, Xcode standard error, standard out. It just doesn't seem generally useful. Um, certainly, I would say we shouldn't do it because there are more important things we can spend our time on. If they wanted to do it, but we I have would to maintain still probably, it. I don't I want would, to maintain a, another way of doing something that is inferior. Well, but again, I'm not. I'm not objecting. I, I'm not. I'm not tying it specifically to the the issue of .NET Core detection. I'm not either. I'm just saying, like, with adding yet another way of running executables in Burn, oh. something else we have to maintain. Uh, well, I certainly don't disagree with the maintenance issue. Um, I can see, you know, from the perspective of someone who doesn't want to write C++ to do this. Um, but also, and maybe this is slightly related to but legally distinct from maintenance is the idea that you know someone would look at this and assume they could use it to run you know I don't know run the SQL server installer from their BA oh gosh yeah right yeah no <sighs> yeah this is a lesser solution to the more general solution we have that will work for more things. .NET Core can fit into the other solution. Maybe it takes a little bit more work, but it will be able to do more useful things. This would be specialized and probably not work for many more things than just this. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to do another way of the same thing. Basically, is what it comes down to. Am I missing something where this is better? I mean, besides the fact that it would be easier to write an XE and return Xcode and have it set a number? Like that's that's the claim to fame for this particular feature request, right? Yeah, it's you don't have to write Wix code to get what you need. You could just write your own executable in whatever language you want, just stick a really easy element in your authoring and then that's all you have to do. Yeah, so like um, Sean, in your comment, um, third, fourth from the bottom, um, you show what the, the custom element might look like. And my guess is that this would turn into command line arguments for their XE. Um, well, the custom element I was thinking of was like a exe search or whatever it's called. It'd be in the core tool set, and then the netfx would have an exe search in the authoring instead of a bundle extension. Is what they were going for here. And you could write this exe search thing using by writing a bundle extension, right? Right. Yeah, that's done. So someone could write a higher level concept. We're providing a lower level concept. Let's start with that and then go from there. I mean, I guess the only thing about the bundle extension is you have to write a Wix compiler extension as well to get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could write that whole thing. The, the right. Yeah. And instead of exe search, it would be util exe search or or whoever did it, 
and there, their uh, extension, you know, XE search, right? And we'll see if that thing pops up. That means a lot of people wanted it. Or, you know, if this comes up again, then we can be like, yeah, we can implement that feature as an extension so we don't have to write it itself in Burn. Burn can have one way of doing this, and we can write an extension that provides an easy way if this comes up more than once. Rather than having Burn. both the full way with the bundle extension inside Burn and the easy way in Burn. It's like I don't want to implement both in Burn itself necessarily if we don't have to. Sorry, what's the burn way? I'm, I'm missing that. The the bundle extension that Sean has added. The the ability to have a bundle extension that runs um, these detections. Okay, so this is also distinct from what Sean's proposed in the, the NetFX extension. No. It, oh well. Yes, yes, sorry. I, I still think the NetF extension thing should go through because I think a lot of people will want that. I think that's generally a thing to do. I don't know how many people want this XE search concept, so I'm not suggesting we write it. I'm just saying it could be written. Okay. I think the specialized one for .NET Core should be done because there's going to be enough people that want it. And .NET Core made their detection hard enough that we probably should, and it's popular enough that we probably should have a solution for that. So this is suspend? Yeah, I, I think we just uh, nuke from orbit, implement as an extension if someone wanted to. Works for me. Harvesting .NET 5 core DLL with com host DLL crashes, heat. In the end, I think this ended up being resolved in someone else's repo, right? .NET. Yes. So they could have also tagged ours to be closed at the same time, since this is where the issue seemed to be originally reported. Right? I mean, technically, he could still read garbage from the registry, and someone could theoretically make it be resilient to that. Mm, I don't know. This is specific to .NET 5. I think we should just close this as a bug against them. Yeah, I'm fine with that. OK. And it looks fine. like it's getting into five servicing, so. Yay. Not that that means a lot for yeah. random .NET yeah. 5 builds, but yeah, it's their bug. <laughs> Can't yeah. It's been the same thing if you self reg any other well, bad DLL. It's like, yeah. I'm just saying there, there really isn't a need for us to work around it because they're going to put it into .NET 5 servicing. We don't yeah, have to wait true. a year for oh, .NET 6. I see what you're saying. That's true. Um, yeah, this looks like a bug that we should fix in 4.0. I don't know about for a preview, but not preview zero necessarily, but we should go figure out what is going on here. And why we're getting so many duplicate defined targets with these references, but that's fine. So yeah, we should put that in 4.0. This one's interesting. Packages and rollback boundaries that aren't scheduled shouldn't be silently ignored. Uh, so I saw this. So essentially it's saying that if you have a fragment and you reference something in the fragment that also has an XE package, you would have brought in, like, say, a search and the package. If you reference the search, then the XE package or whatever would not be added to the chain because it's not referenced by the chain element itself, correct? Right. And the argument is that that should be something, at least a warning. Um, isn't this a specific instance of the general case of pulling in stuff in fragments that don't apply to the current output? No, because it does apply to the current output. It's like referencing a search for, you know, for a bundle, a bundle search, but not realizing you're not getting the XE package pulled in. Right. It's the so I, I thought about this for a while and then I went, you know, this is analogous to components that don't end up with features. Mm, okay. All right. Right. It's it's the exact it's actually it's the exact same thing. It's that you yeah, pulled in yeah, you referenced the fragment and one of the items in that fragment needs an extra reference to be hooked up correctly. Um and so this should be I think this is that. I think it's exactly that. Um scenario and it would be good and it should match whatever that is. I don't know if that's a warning or an error. I don't remember off the top of my head. I 
no, no, I think it's an error because you can't have a component that's dangling. Because I don't know Sounds that we like throw. It be. Yeah, I don't think we throw the component away. But in here, see, we throw the XE package away, right? Because it doesn't end up in a chain, so it just ends up being ignored completely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little different in that in the MSI we'd end up with a component that's not. Well, yeah, it, the, it's different in that in an MSI, the component would end up inside the MSI but not referenced by anything, which might, would be weird, as opposed to a bundle where the package wouldn't even end up in the bundle. So it's not like it's dead weight, it's just completely invisible. So anyway, uh, should I go look at how the components are handled in features and should, I would argue, be, uh, by default, I would say they should have the exact same behavior, and then we can go from there. Hmm. It, um, yes, I, I guess I agree. The The problem is it points to, it's an error in authoring. You should be able to reference, if you want like a search, you should be able to reference it without pulling anything else in. Correct. The fix may be that you have to go fix the fragment. Yeah. yeah. But the fact that it's silently doing it, then that could be an error and things yeah. like that. Yeah, no, no, certainly there should be a diagnostic. Yeah. I'm just, I'm now waffling on whether warning or error is correct. But that's why I think probably should be, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should have that debate when we have the detection and everything else, and it's a matter of, okay, does this message go in errors or warnings? Errors or warnings? Right. Errors or warnings? And then that'll be the end of it. But, yeah, good one. That's a good one, just like these components. All right, and I think we are done for the day. That XC launch took a little bit longer, but uh, not bad. All right, so... Going back, what are we talking about next? Um, Wix v4 design discussion. Oh, that's right. 488, which means I need to go back to my other window here. Um, let's flip back to the triage scene. All right. In progress ARP display name. Uh, and this is one that we should have had on our list before that I don't know how we left it off because it's definitely one that we've not resolved in our much discussions about this thing. Maybe we wanted to avoid it? Yeah, I, I took it off because I wanted it to be at the end. <laughs> All right, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, so this one, fortunately, I remember enough about. I had enough context because this was clearly just a thing where we were not closing on what we... I had one piece of information I was not able to communicate what I was trying to get an answer to, and I was not finding a way to communicate that. And we'll go from there. So the the root problem underlying this is that if you install a bundle that has a prereq, let's say .NET Framework, because that's pretty, I think, the typical case, that then restarts, because you restart, the prereq be able to say, I successfully completed and I need a restart. And because it said it successfully completed, it adds itself to the add and move program registration. So it has registered the whole bundle, even though nothing else in the bundle has been installed except the .NET framework, which is arguably not the product you're installing. And we have to be in add and move programs because when we restart, we need that registration. Uh, well. We need to have our stuff cached so that we can, on restart, start our stuff from a secure cache so that we can pick up after the restart of .NET Framework and go through the process of installing the rest of the user's product. The issue is that if the user um, cancels the um, install after the restart, the bundle will stay registered even though in their mind, they're like, no, I installed the .NET Framework. I know I took a restart for that, but I did not choose to install this product. Why did you leave it on my machine? And it does add some confusion. Um, but we need that registration so that if anything goes wrong, you can uninstall that registration and it will clean up what was anything that was left over in the package cache um, to continue on. Right? Is, am I remembering all this correctly, Sean? Yeah, that's all right. Yep. And so the problem we hit is if we want to maintain the registration in ARP, or that's a question, do we maintain the, uh, reg, uh, how to say this? We maintain the registration in ARP right now 
so that you can clean up the bundle, even though that gives the side effect of the user thinking or questioning, why is this still here? I didn't really install this product. If we don't leave that uh, registration behind, then there are scenarios where stuff can be left over in the package cache. A lot of stuff, if I remember, like the, it could be the entire product, right? could be left in the package cache um, if it was all cached before the restart, right? I right. mean, the prereq BI shouldn't have cached All right, the prereq else. wouldn't have cached anything else. So what would be left would be the XE itself? The bundle, for sure. The bundle itself could end up and being I'm not, Maybe the NetFX package. I don't remember. Well, the NetFX package is installed, so it's kind of, you know. <laughs> right. But it would okay. be left in the package cache, not yes. just not yeah. just installed on the machine. Correct. That seems bad. Yeah, so that's, so the ARP, the, because I, I remember when we made this decision originally and we this side effect was found, the decision was made to just leave the ARP registration, deal with this problem, this known issue of the behavior, which is what the originating bug was talking about behind this, um, that the ARP registration shouldn't be there. We said leave it there so that you can correctly clean up everything. If you know cancel or whatever, or if you, you know, if you exited failure, you can the bundle will still be in place so that if it gets interrupted or whatever, when you hit, you can always go back to our uninstall, go back to add new programs and uninstall that product, and it will correctly remove itself from the machine and clean up everything, as opposed to leaving junk behind on your machine. In the case, yeah, uh, intentionally that. leaving something behind even if it's you know just you know a, a, a megabyte of a bundle seems really really bad right. this um, this is why we can't have nice things because right. yes. many apps do this right so we were trying to do better than that the downside of it so the idea with this in progress in progress arp display name was for the bundle to change its add remove programs description in some way to say, hey, I'm still doing work here. So if you saw it, you would see that a bundle says that it is somehow in progress or install not complete or some hint to the user that, oh, well, I don't want that anymore or whatever and to remove it. Um, if that was to be persisted across this reboot and all those kinds of things, um, which is an interesting which, which I thought was an interesting kind of semi workaround to the uh, the underlying issue of not removing the ARP entry. And then the thread went from there. The question I had that I didn't wasn't communicating well was, was can we actually fix the underlying problem where after restart, can the bundle on quit say, oh, I'm being quit in a mode where I knew I had some partial registration left over, namely the ARP entry and whatever bundles left, can it on quit remove those things as exit? So essentially it cleans itself up when it's running in this scenario to avoid the whole kit and caboodle. It's like, oh, you're exiting now. I was in restart. I know I need to remove this ARP entry because I haven't got to the point where I should truly say this product is installed yet. And I didn't get to a point where I knew if that was possible or if it was just hard and where we go from there. All right. I guess my point was that that's kind of like a separate solution that doesn't fix the scenario I was trying to fix. Okay, and that's our disconnect. So what's the scenario that you're trying to fix then? Um, as soon as they hit the OK button to restart, then if they look into their computer, they can see that the bundle looks like it's installed. Just a second. The little one lost her internet connection, just had to jump in the middle of the meeting. So, 
Uh, very exciting. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> so the scenario I'm trying to fix is as soon as the prereq BA asks, like, do you want to restart? Like from that point until they actually finish installing the bundle, if they go in and look at in ARP, they'll see that it's it looks like it's fully installed. Yep. So what you're trying to look at is too late for the what I'm trying to solve. Also, we have to look at people who look at a reboot prompt and go, no, pass, and right. then we just you know, quit the bundle. Right. At that point, they have the, the quote-unquote final ARP entry sitting right. there. To I totally agree with all that, and that's why I think this in-progress ARP display Display name, or you know, the the idea of saying something in add and remove programs that it's um, in progress has value. Like it is a it is an interesting feature to have implemented, independent of all of the other things we discussed. Because the same scenario you describe happens like if you have a bundle that takes a very long time to install. If you go and look in ARP, it'll be registered and it will look like it's there because we register very early for all those failure cases. The fact that it would say in ARP, currently installing or whatever the you know magical text that we put there would be interesting and um, I think a good thing, a good hint to people looking at it. Um, and then if it persists after the restart as well until the point that it completes, I think that's a good thing too. So I think all of that is a good thing. Um, I just wasn't sure if that in progress, having it say in progress after the user hit cancel, because the ARP entry would be left behind, they hit cancel. It, if it doesn't get removed or doesn't get changed, then it's not solving the underlying problem that people are talking about, which is the this ARP entry is being left. My product was not installed. I'm confused. And you have to understand the underlying design decisions that we made for that to make sense. So for this auto cleanup you're thinking about, is is that really limited just to cancellation? I think it's rollback too. I don't know if we do the right thing on rollback. Yeah, so I think that's where I was trying to go with your solution was this wouldn't really be um, just for the restart scenario. Like if we were going to go implement your solution, then why wouldn't every single time the bundle exits, it checks whether it's actually installed or not. And then if not, then it cleans itself up. That I'm fine. If that's the implementation and that works well, then I'm fine with that. That's totally fine. Like if that's the best way to implement it. Um, one of the chal I the challenges here is, are we like, elevated enough to be able to remove our registration? Or is one of our processes elevated enough to be to remove the registration? Um, where if we run from the run once key, we will be elevated enough because run once will launch us elevated. Um, in normal scenarios, we may not be. So I wasn't sure we could do this every time you launch a bundle and then cancel you may not be elevated enough to um, take care of it. So I guess, so here's the thing. I was trying to separate the two points. I think the in-progress ARP display name thing is a cool feature independent of the of the prob the underlying problem that brought up this concept of in-progress. I think that is a neat idea. And um, I think if Sean wants to run with it, I'm like, that's that's absolutely cool. Um, I, would, I would be interested in doing it, except I have too many other things I have to do. So I'm obviously not setting up for it. Um, then... My my only point on what I was discussing was I'm concerned that it, that alone may not be enough to solve the thing that other people are talking about, which was the the scenario where hey this shouldn't even be here because my project isn't actually installing. I said cancel. You know you see what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that in progress ARP, which is a cool feature, can be said to solve the problem that people are like there should be no ARP entry anyway. Saying that it's in progress is nominally better than. You know, minimally better than not saying anything at all, or that than just having the product there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I was just. It really is two separate solutions that don't need to be tied together. Correct. Great. I agree with that. Totally agree with that. So I think we're like in violent agreement. <laughs> 
actually on this. And the only thing was, I don't know that in progress ARP display name, if that feature should be used to resolve the problem 4822, which I should probably bring up. Um, yeah, I mean, there was several issues around this one. I thought in this one. Yeah, see. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Maybe this is a really long history. Not always people talking about it, right? Does it have a link to another one? <laughs> Option uh, hide, burn, and train. Maybe that one? No, that would probably too new. No. During that effects extension. The one I'm thinking of is, it was talking about prereqs as well. Well, this guy here, Daniel KU15, actually starts getting the hang of it pretty far along. I think when he started um, started trying to solve the problem, I think he got to a point where he was like, oh, well, then I want this and this and this. And it was just like, yeah, that's the hard, what you're asking for is the hard part. The main problem is prefect might be one of two types. Yeah. Yeah, so he starts getting the hang of it at the end, but we still don't have an answer. Yep, and ARP entry on not an installation reboot is also an issue. Yep. yep. So I guess I was focusing on Daniel Koo. Mm -hmm. where they said, where they were talking about their prerequisites and stuff, where, you know, they're installing their bundle and then on restart, it looks like it's installed. Mm -hmm. So I was focusing on that part of the issue. So really it sounds like this issue has two root problems, which I can, I can, do it all together, I'm fine with that. I'll just have to add to the whip how we're doing this automatic cleanup on bundle exit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, I, actually, you know what, I'm less worried now. We're all kind of on the same page and I, uh, I'll let you decide how best you want to organize that. I, putting them all in one, I'm not sure putting them all in one web is a good idea because this is a nice clean feature description by itself. So having a separate one that deals with the ARP problem and all those kinds of things might be um, well, the automatic cleanup might be a nice thing to describe separately. Because this has another user story we could add here which is as a user, I can see the bundles in progress by opening an ARP before it's complete and seeing that it's not done. That's another advantage of this feature right here. I guess why I want to put it all together is because the main reason we need two separate solutions is because we're throwing away or we're, we're not going to not register an ARP. Right. Right, I think that's fair. And that, that decision is causing us to do a lot of different things. Yep, I, and if it's easier to put them in one whip, then by all means do that. I'm done with that too. And then for the automatic cleanup and exit, do you care whether we try to run it all the time, assuming we're elevated? No, I, we have the privileges already. No, I, I, and honestly, I haven't been, I haven't been through the code to know what's the best way to do that anyway. So no, I, I, I don't have a, a solution in mind of this is exactly how this should work, right? I just know I remember the problem, and I know that we have not revisited a solution. Um, as far as I know, no one has revisited. It. This is how I would implement such a solution to that problem. It's just been this lingering problem. 
Well, I think, I think the issue I was having was like if we either need to do it before we unload the BA so that we can use the same code because the code calls the PA, BA while it's doing apply. Or if we do it after we unload the BA, then we need to have like a completely separate code path for cleaning up yep. outside of apply. Yep, I, I would not. Yes, what you described does not surprise me. So do you have an initial uh, an idea about which way you'd want to go? I, I don't have a good feel for it. Um, I think I think there will be um, I think there will be load bearing walls, load bearing load bearing pylons. As you try to remove these walls, you'll be like, mm, I I ended up having to go this path because these things were true in Sideburn. I think that's probably the case. For example, I think we might find that it's hard to do when the BA still loaded. Um, that wouldn't surprise me. Or it could be the other way around. It's like, yeah, we have to do it when the BA is still loaded to get to these things. And I, I don't I don't have enough context load in my head with all the restart handling to know where that's at. But what well, you described is exactly a thing that, you know, I would look at first when trying to track this problem down. Hmm, which are these ways to go? Yes. I mean, what is worse, having BA messages after the BA called quit? We're doing a whole bunch of work to getting cleanup working without the BA. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good question. I don't know. Sending messages after quit is going to be surprising. Like, I don't, I, don't, I think doing it keeping the BA in the loop, I don't think that's going to work very well. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I would, that doesn't surprise me that that's not going to work out well, which means refactoring the burn code to make it reusable, you know, right? So it's like, yeah, this function gets called from two different places, one from the normal path through the BA and one through this cleanup path. Um, buyer beware. I mean, it, it might be as simple as just having a, you know, is the BA active? And then if not, just don't send the message. That, that, that was, I was thinking that too when you said you know, if the BA is around or not. Yep. I don't know. I, I, I agree with everything that you're bringing up, and it is kind of like the looking at the code and deciding what the best way through is. Okay. So what happens if um, what happens if we can't solve every nook and cranny in terms of when do we when do when can we declare that we're done as done as we're going to get? So my thinking along is is um, we can probably do the restart the the framework reboot issue right mm -hmm. because it's in run once and we're elevated and we can do it. Mm -hmm. In any other case, you have this in progress ARP display name, but if you're not elevated, then you can't remove the registration or even update the display name. Right. So, but we don't have people complaining about that scenario. So I'm, that's why I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think the well, solution is going to solve the case it needs to solve. Okay, I guess what I'm, I, 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 it feels fuzzy when we're talking about this as the the cleanup on quit aspect. Mm -hmm. Are we just trying to solve the reboot issue? I believe. Sorry. Are we trying to solve the reboot slash cancel issue? Is I think my question. I mean, I think we're trying to make it to where the BA doesn't have to know what's going on. So like. Even if you, because today in V3, you can write your BA such that it looks at the end, and if the bundle is registered but nothing's installed, the BA can silently clean up by itself. See, today. on cancel, run and uninstall. So we're just trying to narrow, 
make the number of scenarios where the BA actually needs to run that smaller to where it, in V4, eventually it's going to be the burn will clean up if it's elevated. If it's not elevated, then it can't. But then the BA can still kick in and say, yeah, I'm going to show you AC prompt to make sure that we get cleaned up. And that's the reason for the question about messages after quit? No. no. That's just the overall design, which way, I mean, do you want to tell the BA, hey, by the way, you hit cancel and you said quit, and we're going to take a few more seconds to touch the disk and clean it up for you. Right. Your exit process is going to be slower than you might be used to in this scenario, for example. While we delete, you know, a meg and some off the disk and some reg keys. Okay. I, 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 will, I will wait for the shaving to eliminate the fuzziness. Yeah, I, I think it's clear when you get in the code. Because I remember looking at this and just being like, oh, threading this needle is going to be really hard. But that was back when nothing in burn was proven, right? So it was just like, this is such a minor issue compared to just having everything work that uh, it just, <laughs> it was like not, it was not a V1 kind of feature, right? And so it's just never come back around. And now here we are with burn and it's like, yeah, now it's finally bubbled to the point where we can talk about something like this. Um, this level of bugs to me. It's like, yeah, this is great. This is progress. Okay, cool. But every time I use Burn for some project, I'm like, oh gosh, I just love this thing. <laughs> for all the things it does and the the complex system it has, it, it always is like, oh yeah, that's just going to work. And then it does the way you, I'm always really happy with when I come back to Burn. So that's a credit to the people that designed it, which is not, I don't even know if mostly me. <laughs> a lot of Frederick back there. All right, cool. Are we good here then? I yeah. mean, for now, like we've, we, we have progress and we can move forward from here. Yeah. All right, great. Let's talk about where we're at with the GitHub's discussions beta in the last 10 minutes of the meeting or so, since I think it's still just us right now. So I'm not expecting a lot of questions and comments at the end. Um, we did get the GitHub Discussions beta enabled for the Wix tool set, and as we discussed, we put it on our issues repo as the place to discuss all things related to the Wix tool set. Um, and uh, we got enabled just before they opened up the beta for everybody to enable it, but eh, whatever, it's great. We were a little bit early. Um, there's been minimal interaction with the uh, the GitHub discussions, which is kind of to be expected because we haven't been promoting it um, as heavily. We haven't promoted it heavily, mostly because I had a number of uh, concerns about the notifications that I was getting or lack of notifications, which Sean pointed out the way to fix. Thank you very much, Sean. I put those two things here. Um, these are the hints that he sent out to everybody. Um, make sure that your notification settings in your GitHub are set correctly and then use the project watch up in the top right corner to change and set your custom and that fixed everything for me. If I go through and setting custom levels on all the various repos, I started getting emails again. So thank you very much for helping me with that, Sean. All right, so it seems to be working with the minimal interaction that we have. Um, it's working as well as discussion mailing lists ever do. Um, people come up with really vague questions and things like that. Um, the we have had the feedback that I expected from a few people that was, please use GitHub discussions or a web form in general because getting on a mailing list is challenging. Uh, also got the feedback on the mailing list that I would still like to be able to maintain this through mail. Uh, please have that happen. So now that I'm able to get notifications through these hints through mail, the mail thing is working pretty well. Um, although it's unfortunate that their default template for discussions looks like an ish, a bug update, but I'm hoping they're going to fix that in GitHub or at least change it a little bit. Should we promote discussions more to uh, push it further? It's gone pretty well as much as I've expected thus far. I'm looking for other people's input, which basically means Sean and Bob at this point, I think. Not sure how else we can promote it. 
I mean, we already said it exists in the Wix users. And then I guess I put that pull request for the issues repo about putting it in the bug template yeah, and so, contributing guidelines. Right. So I was updating the issues template was one of the big things I thought we could do was being like, hey, this goes here. We also haven't updated the website to point at it yet. Um, right. I don't know how many people are going to the website regularly to say join the mailing list, but I think if we change the website to say go here, um, we might we'll, we'll see if we get more traffic. Um, I was looking well, b before doing that. I was looking for the yes, or or should we wait another two weeks? I, I guess that's the kind of the feedback I was looking for. Well, I guess my my question is: Are we satisfied that? How close are we to saying, yeah, let's switch to, to discussions and and start to deprecate the mailing list? What's uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a yes no question. It's it's more discussion question of at what yeah. point would we do that? Yeah, you know? so I I I think I've been doing a bit more research, partly because I hit a few of them that I needed to use them, um, where I was using discourse servers for various parts, including GitHub has a discourse server for its own stuff, which was very interesting, because that's where I had to go sign up to get on the discussions beta. I don't know. That's kind of some sort of meta thing there. Um, and that experience is pretty decent. So we've been looking for a while at FireGiant for us standing up a Discord server, and we could host a thing for Wix toolset to move discussions there. Um, so in my mind, it's kind of like, do we move to like Discourse or do we um, go to GitHub Discussions? And it felt like we should try GitHub Discussions since that would keep us all around the code. You know, GitHub monoculture for the win, I guess. Um, it's been okay. It's been fine, I guess I'd say. Um, it's not as advanced as Discourse, but I don't know that we need much more advanced than what it's offering thus far. Um, I guess I'm, yeah, I, I don't know how to, I guess I was looking for some feedback on, yeah, we should definitely push this more. I don't have an answer to your question, Bob. That's really what it comes down to. Okay. I don't know. I don't have a question of when do we say that these things are better than mailing lists. I think mailing lists are. Oh, uh, here's the other piece of data. Um, I have been battling our mailing list hoster to get the freaking search working and keeping the archive stuff, and they've not been fantastic. That's part of the other reason driving the, behind this is that their lack of um, success has driven me to start looking for alternatives. Let's right. put it that way. Yep. Um, and our web and you know the searchability of our archive discussions is is not good at all. Part again, part of them not keeping the archives up and things like that. Um. So I guess I feel like we're. Yeah. That together means is why I think that I'm moving away from the mailing list mentally. I'm mentally preparing to move away from mailing list because they feel like. Um, older technology that's starting to fail us, or at least not be as successful as it was in the past. Um, yeah, that's reasonable. I, part of me is I, I, I would like us to have, you know, one preferred method. There's one good way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I and, agree with that. You know, we're probably always going to need more than one, like, you know, Stack Overflow is – well, you can't get rid of Stack Overflow. Yeah, you can't get rid of Stack Overflow. <laughs> nope. We're approaching 10,000 questions tagged with Wix on Stack Overflow. Yeah. Um, so we can't get rid of that. Um, Nor should we. No, no. Um, it's it, it's great at what it does. Mm -hmm. um, and we still need to maintain the ability to have discussions, which Stack right. Overflow explicitly does not right. do. Right. Um, so we need an alternative to just plain Q&A. Yep. Um, now that said, we could say if you have questions, go post on Stack Overflow. And these, these being discourse or discussions, could be you know limited to just actual discussions or discourse, um, which you know I guess that's an option. The 
I hear you. The problem that I've had with that is that it's one Stack Overflow can be kind of snippy about what kind of things you put there. Um, That's true. So if you don't ask a question well, and or your question is deemed not a real question, too speculative, um, you get shut down there. So I have a. Ch it's challenging to send somebody there and know that they're going to have a percent success rate. Um, so you end up having a place where you have to discuss it when that happens and they get shut down. Yeah. Or you just have no. We definitely need discussion. Um, right. Uh, absolutely. So I I, I, I I don't know that sending people to Stack Overflow after they've asked a question in the in a discussion place, sending them to say, hey, you have a question, go ask on Stack Overflow. I, I'm I'm hesitant to do that given that Stack Overflow will be like, no, that's not a good question. Go back or. Don't come here, and then they're going back. I, I don't yeah, no, I, I wasn't suggesting that. Um, okay. I, I was more suggesting, um, you know, what we would put in the templates and on the website. Oh, it's like if you have a question, go here. Okay. If you want to discuss something, you know, whatever, go here. Okay. So, um, and obviously, we could tolerate whatever kind of questions we wanted, and if people wanted to dilute, which you know they already do, you yeah. absolutely see. The same question posted to Stack Overflow, the mailing list, and now discussions, um, which you know it's like, whatever. I, I don't, I don't have a serious problem with that, given that we can't have just one. If we can't have just one, then I'd like it to be two. Um, and again, I have no problem saying, you know, post your questions here, um, and in discussions, and you know, we'll have a category for things that aren't questions. And I guess my, my gut feeling was that we should use GitHub discussions unless they don't work because it kept it closer to Wix tool set. Yeah, yeah. Versus, you know, going and having a Fire Giant hosted discourse, which we'll probably do anyway for our customers. Um, but, and and I'm not against hosting, we haven't talked about this internally at the company, but you know, I'm not against hosting the community there either um, and figure out how to keep the customers versus community kind of thing uh, clean. Uh, we would we, we would sort that out if, but with all that, it's just like, that's like a third place if you versus just having it on GitHub. And then of course there's always Stack Overflow. It's essentially, there's always Stack Overflow. You can't get rid of that. Yep. Yep. Um, and then there is, um, um, and then there's GitHub, and it's kind of like there's right. the two, right? Yeah, I, I I would I would agree with you. We should default to using GitHub capabilities on, until slash unless they they you know are not sufficient, right? Um, so yeah, I I guess my vote is let's start to deprecate the mailing list, moving people to discussions, um, and if there's a you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why GitHub discussions wouldn't work. It seems we have, you know, pretty much the control we need. Um, but you know, should they not work, then we can say, well, okay, they didn't work, and we'll switch to someplace else. Sean. Yeah, I like discussions. I like being able to convert issues to discussions. Yeah, which is definitely. You yeah, would be able to do with discourse. That's right. That's absolutely true. Yeah, that feature would be. That feature has value. Um, all right, so uh, given that we don't have a lot of people here, I want to let this video kind of float out there. Um, two weeks is Christmas Eve. I don't think we're we're not going to have this meeting on Christmas Eve. Um, Should we do Tuesday instead of Thursday? The twenty second instead of the Thursday. I don't know that I'm against that. Bob, any thoughts? I'd be fine. Um, let me double check, make sure I'm... Okay, that's currently open in my world. So, um, okay. L let's go ahead and plan for that, the 22nd. And let's. I will come back with, you know, kind of whatever we see. I think updating the issue template to mention discussions is... Um, is a, a good idea. I'm not prepared to change the website yet. Let's see how the next couple of weeks goes. And then if we're based, let's reconvene in the two weeks minus two days um, and say, cool, now that we've you know thought about all this, do we flip the bit on the website? I, l let's do that. Two weeks, two days, let's make another review on flipping the website as changing it from using mailing list to using discussions.
Cool. Yeah, that works. All right. Yeah. And I think updating the issues template is a good thing. Um, and I have some, I want to add some harsh language I'm, to the issue template at this point, because I'm really tired of junk issues. I almost want to say, if you do not follow these instructions, your issue will just be deleted outright, just to get people to read the stupid issues, um, the template, because I, it takes more time for us to mess with these things than it does for them to read the thing correctly. So I want them to read it correctly. Um, so let's, so we'll go talk about the issue template in the PR since that has already been opened by uh, Sean and uh, one step ahead of all this. And I've done all of that without showing the slide. Oh, sorry people, my bad. It did all that with all showing the in progress things. Um, anybody following along is like, what are they talking about? Okay, I'm gonna throw this up here. I think it's just us. Um, but there's that for posterity in the video. I apologize if, if you get to hear, you can go rewind our, no, take a snapshot of this, rewind our conversation, watch the slide while we go forward. Anyway, here's all the data. Anything else people want to talk about? Anything else going on? No? All right. Believe it or not, I'm going to go jump into a GitHub online meeting about discussions and how people are using it. So that's the other thing in two weeks and two days. I'll talk about, um, hopefully, maybe I'll learn something about what other people have done. Like, oh, that's a cool hidden feature in GitHub Discussions. We should use that. I don't know what I'll learn. So I'm going to go do that. We'll be back on the 22nd. So that's two weeks minus two days. Um, that's pretty easy. I will send out an announcement about that. And uh, we'll do this all again. Sounds good? Works for me. Yeah. All right. OK, so two weeks minus two days. Till then, everyone take it easy, and uh, we'll talk to you just before the Christmas holiday. Bye. Bye. Bye.